The Dust Bowl Overview The Dust Bowl started with a period of severe drought in the 1930s. The wind swept up clouds of dust from the topsoil and blew them across the west, creating massive dust storms that could be miles high and wide, blotting out the sun and any light from coming in. The clouds were not just annoying, they were outright dangerous. They could suffocate the lungs of humans and any livestock that were still left wandering the fields. The storms also blew sand everywhere, burying the ground in a thick layer of dust. The dust and sand then had to be swept up. The particles also traveled into insecure, unsealed houses, piling dust and debris into every corner. Because of this, many gave up their farmland and headed for California, hoping for a better life and dreaming of success. In the years that followed the Civil War, hundreds of families traveled to the West. The Homestead Act of 1862 had allowed U.S. adult citizens to own 160 acres of surveyed land in the West. For several years, many families traveled to the West to get a piece of land. When they got there, the grass was still long and lush. The people came and started plowing the land so they could plant crops. They plowed it and plowed it and plowed it and so on and so forth. The land was left mistreated, even though it didn't seem that way at first. The 1920s brought a great success to the crops and the farmers' businesses, but the prosperity of the Roaring Twenties suddenly plummeted when the stock market crashed in 1929. What would come next would be known as the Dirty Thirties. Part 2 the causes of the Dust Bowl. The stock market crash of 1929 was one of the causes of the farmers' plight. There were many other reasons, too. For example, there was a drought. Also, the temperatures were unusually high and there was a lot of wind erosion. The mistreatment of the soil caused the dirt to be easily flung from place to place. Part 3. The Start of the Dust Bowl There were always small whirlwinds of dust on dry, windy days. It was so common that most farmers paid no attention. Then the more they plowed, the bigger and more ferocious the whirlwinds got, but still the farmers barely paid attention. Suddenly, in the summer of 1931, the rain stopped. There was a drought. The before prosperous land now no longer offered golden wheat. All the crops withered. The little whirlwinds turned into gigantic dust storms. The land that had been mistreated and overplowed was now showing that it could be as difficult to maintain and cultivate as a desert would. So the dust storms continued and it got worse and worse. And in 1934, the dust storms were really bad and everyone thought that it that was the worst. It couldn't get even, even worse. So, by 1935, they got the worst type of Nova and, and then they decided to celebrate. But they weren't prepared for what was to come next. Part 4. Black Sunday. On the morning of April 14, 1935, it was an unusually sunny day. Families went out to picnic. The sky was more bright and clear than usual, and no one expected anything bad to happen. But in the morning, a cold front had been moving down the plains. Soon, the temperatures dropped, and the wind picked the loose dirt up, forming it into a gi gigantic dust cloud. The sunny skies turned dark, and by 4 o'clock p.m., it was completely dark. The dust storm was hundreds of miles wide and hundreds of feet high. The storm blew as far as to the east coast, and it finally disappeared along the Gulf of Mexico. Afterwards, an Associated Press reporter coined the phrase Dust Bowl, which is most likely why that term became popular. The Black Sunday storm displaced around 300,000 tons of topsoil. It was the largest dust storm in the Dust Bowl. It was the day many would, rem rem would remember. Part 5. Migration. 
Because of the Dust Bowl, many farmers and families gave up their land and decided to migrate somewhere else to start over. About 2.5 million people traveled to, to another place. Many of them went to California hoping to find work. When they got there, some of them did get work, but they had to work many hours a day, and they were paid very little. They had to live in small tents and shacks along the road. The hardships that they had to face would leave an everlasting impression in history. Part 6. Aftermath The dust storms had a devastating effect on the economy. Even though the rain came back by 1939, in many places, it would take a long time for the economy to recover. Many people died from the Dust Bowl. Many contracted a disease referred to as dust pneumonia, in which the dust would cloud the lungs. This is probably the main reason so many people died. Part 7. Conclusion In conclusion, the Dust Bowl was an event, or series of events, that happened in the 1930s. The drought, the overplowed soil, wind erosion, and the Great Depression all contributed to the disaster. The winds blew away the topsoil and formed large dust storms that could be very high and wide. The largest storm occurred in 1935, and it was known as Black Sunday. Many people had to migrate. Even though the rain started to come back around 1939, the Dust Bowl would leave a long impression on the economy. Many people died in the Dust Bowl, mainly from the disease known as dust pneumonia. Overall, the Dust Bowl was a deadly occurrence in the plains that was both dangerous and econo economically devastating. But it is also a lesson, especially to farmers, that in order for the land to be maintained correctly, good methods of farming need to be used everywhere.